Okay, so in this exercise, I'm going to uh, have you draw uh, the chair confirmation of a tri substituted cyclohexane. So. so here's a cyclohexane with three substituents on it. First of all, is it trans or cis? Okay, it's a trick question. You can't define a tri-substituted or any cyclohexane that's got more than two substituents. You can't say it's trans or cis because the methyl and the chloro are trans, the methyl and the hydroxyl are trans, but the chloro and the hydroxyl are cis. So there's the molecule can't be trans or cis. Only two substituents can have that relationship. So in naming this compound, you would actually have to, have to put in R and S. So again, this compound is chiral. Uh, that's going to be an exercise for a later video. I'll do I'll do that, but you'll have to come back for that. So I'm not gonna, actually going to name this one right now. I just want you to draw the chair, uh, draw both chairs of this cyclohexane, and then tell me, tell yourself, I guess, if you're sitting there, which one is more stable. So I'll give you a second, hit pause, draw this in both chairs. Okay, so first just draw your chair however you want to do that. Methyl is up, it's out, I'm going to call it up. The chloro is then trans and the OH is trans, so I'm going to start here and I'm going to arbit I've just drawn the two substituents that would be on that carbon. I'm going to then say that the methyl is up, proton is down. So that means the methyl is axial, the H is equatorial. Okay, so then one, two, three, four. The OH is has a one-four relationship. So this again would be named as a cyclohexanol. We'll do the name in another video, but this would be one, two, three, four, five, and s no, it wouldn't. Back up. What I just made a mistake. Hit pause and figure out what the mistake is I just made. Okay, if you're back. Probably people would tell me I should edit that. Redraw this. So if you're numbering this for nomenclature, it's a cyclohexanol, so OH is the carbon with the OH is one. You want to go this way so that the chlorine is three rather than five. Two, three, four, five, six. I had initially gone this way, and that would have given me one. Four, five instead of one three four. One three four is lower than one four five, so this is the way we go. Okay, so in your chair, the OH and the methyl have to have a one four relationship. So if we do this, I said methyl is four, five, six, one. So the OH has to be on carbon one. Again, draw in your two substituents on carbon one. Don't, don't decide you're going to put the OH somewhere. Draw the two substituents in. OH is trans to the methyl, so the methyl is up. The H is down. So being trans to the methyl would mean you would be down. So the OH has to be down, and that makes the H up, right? This thing is down. Okay, so that gets your methyl and your OH correct. Now, you want the chlorine on carbon three, two, three. So the chlorine has to be on that carbon. So again, put your two substituents in. All right, you have an axial that's down and an equatorial that's up on carbon three. The chlorine is trans to the methyl, the methyl's up, so the chlorine has to be down. That makes the H up, right? So that guy's, the chlorine's down, that H is up. Okay, so that is one chair. This is one of the two chair forms of the original molecule. So to get the second one, you want to do a chair flip. That's always the way you're going to answer this question. Get one chair, and then if you need the second chair, just do a chair flip. Okay, so again, equilibrium. The two chairs go back and forth. They interconvert between one another. So carbon four, the up carbon will come down. Carbon one, the down carbon will come up.
methyl is up, well, let's put our substituents, right? So there are the two substituents on carbon one, uh, sorry, carbon four. That carbon is up, that carbon is down. The methyl belongs on the up carbon. All right, carbon three. So up carbon, down carbon. The chlorine is on the down carbon, or down, the chlorine is down on carbon three. The H is up. So that's four, three, two, one. Carbon one has the hydroxyl, so draw your two substituents in, an axial and an equatorial. Again, every carbon has an axial and an equatorial substituent. So the OH on carbon one is down, so it's here. There you go, you've done your chair flip. So now which one of those is more stable? If you need a minute to think about it, hit pause. I'm obviously gonna move on here in a second. I'm not gonna stand in my office by myself for a few minutes. So uh, this, the, the second one we drew, circled in green, is the more stable. All right, if you didn't get that, pause again and think about why. Okay, the reason is we've got three substituents on this on this carbon, or on this cyclohexane, and all three in the green circled structure are equatorial. All three in the other structure are axial. So there's a big difference here. If you have three substituents and you can put them all equatorial, you want to do that. Note that you can't just arbitrarily put them all equatorial. So if we had a stereoisomer, if the OH had been cis to the methyl, it would have to be up and it would have to be here. So you have to keep the relative arrangements trans between methyl and chlorine, trans between methyl and OH, cis between OH and chloro. You have to keep that in the chair. You can't just decide, if I ask you to draw the most stable chair, you can't just put them all equatorial because you want them all to be equatorial. They can be all equatorial, but only if they're uh, stereochemistry allows. All right, there you go.